it won't be just me today. Um, that's part of being a community that there's more than one voice in it. And so I've invited some of my friends and colleagues uh, in the project to come and speak um, here today about different aspects about Fandango, about Seattle Fandango project. And so we will just set up and, and uh, for a second here. Okay. And uh, we will also um, start off with music. We're not just going to talk about music, right? We're going to show it to you. There we go. While we're setting up, um, this song, which is a song form, it's sort of son is all over Latin America. Um, son is actually a, a song called La Morena, which means the dark skinned woman or the beautiful dark skinned woman. Y dice: Vengan, fandangueros. Vengan, aunque sea de adorno. Epa. exhausted herself physically in zapateado dance. Translated literally, it means leaving one's soul on the tarima. And upon having this cathartic experience with the help of other bailadoras, musicians, community, this moment is especially significant in that it, it's a community that's contributed to one's happiness. So in this sense, it's not an individu individualistic venture for satisfaction, but a community effort to reach this climactic moment. What we will share with you here today is, is a staging of a fandango. And this staging of fandango, we will consistently talk about convening or 
convivencia as a central aesthetic principle of this practice. Seattle Fandango Project is utilizing convivencia to build community, to challenge academic paradigms, to, to build community, to start connecting with each other. And by the time our 15 minutes are up, this may not be the thing for you, right? The music, the, the singing, the style. But the idea worth knowing here is that convening or convivencia through participatory music practice is something special and worth reinstating in our modern society. Una. Within the fandango. Any sound here? Yeah, okay. Uh, the music within the fandango, called Son Jarocho, is a musical style from Veracruz, Mexico. During the Spanish colonization, European, indigenous, African, and Arab cultures emerged, encountered each other, and provided the essential elements for the fandango. After 400 years, the fandango still thrives and continues to grow today. <clears throat> the music that you just heard and the instruments that you see here represent those elements. You have the tarima and the dance the in representing the indigenous, the leona and jarana, the European and Arab, the marimbo, the African. Also, the song, the verse, the copla, is something that someone improvises. They start when the song music is happening, they sing out, <clears throat> and someone responds to them, which affirms their existence within the fandango. This music in the 1940s was canonized by the Mexican government as part of its effort to, um, as part of its effort in imagining a new national identity. And the uh, Son Jarocho was taken out of the Fandango and reformatted for the stage. What happened to it was that the music became standardized, the importance of improvisation was lost, <clears throat> and the African and Arab cultures denied. But in the 1970s, musicians who couldn't stand to see their culture, their cultural identity watered down, began recovering it by talking to the elder musicians and community members. Encuentros or encounters were organized and musicians from all over Veracruz came to convene, to play, and to discuss the, the future of the tradition. This movement was known as El Nuevo Movimiento Jaranero. Now, presently, Fandango has come to the, to the United States and is practiced largely by Chicano, Mexican, and Latino communities. As, as Martha said, as a way to build community and to also transform ideas about nation, about community, and about self. And just recently, now, the Fandango is here in Seattle and it's being practiced or as known as the Seattle Fandango Project.
In Seattle Fandango Project, we don't leave our personal lives at the door. Our individual histories and our daily experiences inform and complement our participation. We spend time getting to know one another, both during and outside the Fandango. This is convivencia. Uh, the relationships we build elevate our entire experience playing together. Our art as dancers and as musicians is bound at the core by our investment in one another as people. In our study, we have not had one teacher or instructor, but many, a whole team of knowledge facilitators, transmitters of wisdom and insight. Our approach to learning is decentralized and participatory. Through this non-hierarchical teaching, we have come to recognize multiple educators as possessing information which is not only unique or of interest, but absolutely necessary for our representation, our fidelity in understanding this tradition. We have learned to listen first and ask questions later. We imitate mirroring what we see. We get confused and we get frustrated, but we are encouraged as we reattempt. We recall this process indefinitely. Then questions are asked, then explanations given. Again, we repeat, recreate, create. Also at the heart of our learning is an exercise in active listening. Listening is essential. To sustain the driving syncopated beat of a son, dancers must listen to one another. We also must listen to musicians, and musicians listen to us. We nurture one another. So music and dance protocol reinforces convivencia. An almost sacred state of equilibrium is achieved when each person involved in Fandango is acutely aware of this protocol and through it consciously seeks to respect their fellow Fandangueros. As I delve deeper into the practice of Fandango, I'm continually impressed by the overwhelming dedication and commitment um, of these Fandango practitioners. Um, there are Fandangueros of every age, of diverse educational, socioeconomic, and political backgrounds and identities. We are all welcome here. It's my belief that these people have found a space within Son Jarocho that resonates with their own deeper sense of humanity. They utilize this technology of convivencia as a means to perpetuate love in their lives and in their communities. Go dance barefoot like a gypsy, my friend advised during a particularly difficult period of my life. I took her extremely literally and ran out and immediately registered for a Turkish Romani folk dancing class. <laughs> Since then, participatory music and dance have transformed my life. They've changed how I feel about my body, my relationships, and as a social work scholar interested in community level interventions, they have radically transformed how I think about how communities are built. Fandango Son Hirocho is unique amongst the genres that I have experienced in that it has a term that names this process by which communities are built via dancing and singing together, convivencia. Even more exciting is that these communities throughout this transnational movement mobilize to do social action around issues that are near and dear to their hearts, be it environmental justice, immigration reform, or economic globalization. I've also been deeply touched as a staffer and student at the University of Washington by how the Seattle Fandango Project has transformed our institutional culture on campus. Seeing multi-generational families of color, little kids, members of our urban community here in Seattle that otherwise really might not feel that comfortable or welcome at the university, moving straight into the heart of campus to study music and dance, to learn to sing, on a Saturday afternoon, it's been incredibly powerful. We may not be using the term social technology the way that you anticipated this morning. But we hope that you will consider participatory music and dance 
as a powerful social technology for connecting, particularly in a musical culture that is ever increasingly characterized by hyper-individualism. So unplug those earbuds from that iPod, pick up a guitar, and put on your dancing shoes. Thank you.